Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be testing, can we game on Intel 11th Gen no graphics cards? The 11th Gen Intel processors come with a slight uptick in their onboard graphics. And with the Ryzen APUs becoming very hard to get, could this be a good option to hold you over in the midst of this GPU crisis? Well, we're about to find out. But before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. All you have to do is use the link in the description down below. Go to GVG Mall's website, use code TV20 to get 20% off of your purchase. Really easy to activate your Windows install, buy the key, you get the key, and then you can just throw it into your Windows install of choice and boom, there you go. You have activated Windows 10 ready to go. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be testing this old school test bench style. We're really not doing a normal PC build because well, we're actually gonna be using this in a future PC build and channel. So be sure you're subscribed. But I was just curious because our PC business over at PC Bros, we're trying to sell APU systems right now with everything going on and they've been very popular, but they are hard to get your hands on. So I wanted to see if this new Intel HD graphics on the 11500 is actually worth considering and maybe using temporarily until the market gets better. And it is readily available on Amazon. So you know what? Why don't we won't waste any more time and just kind of talk a little bit more about this test bench and then dive into some testing. So for the processor, we have the Intel 11500. This is a non-K, non-F, so integrated graphics, of course, that's the whole point of the video. Six cores, 12 threads, and you have the integrated 750 UHD graphics. So on the i3s, the 10100 especially, we really like the integrated graphics in those. And those are the Intel 630 UHD graphics. So we're talking a lot of a big number change here, right? So that probably means like 130% more performance. 200 plus FPS, no problem whatsoever. Now for the motherboard, we have the Asus Prime B560 Plus. This is a great motherboard. Realistically, we could use like any motherboard for this test as long as it supports decently fast RAM. Uh, before RAM slots, you have the typical Intel style Toast CPU die that they make specifically for the Toasty Rose. So Shout out to Intel for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, a good motherboard and it's gonna work well for benchmarking our CPU. Now for RAM, because we wanna give this Intel processor the best chance with its integrated graphics, dual channel ballistics, crucial, you guys already know what it is, but 16 gigs DDR4, 3200 megahertz, 16 gig kit, non-RGB because, well, it's just a benchmark and really nothing in this build needs to look great. Um, now for the SSD, we have the WD Blue SN 550. We really like these. They're basically on par with like the crucial P1, P2, but NVMe, you know, M.2 SSD, it's not Gen 4 or anything crazy, but they're really cheap, like 62 to $70 for one. And for the power supply, a brand that we have been using a lot lately, the Ares Game AVG 500 always comes with a nice dent built in, but hey, we've never had one of these not work. 80 plus bronze, typically really nice sleeved cables. Um, and just to verify, cause just look a little bit different. Just to verify. So it's the same cables, but does it look different? I think the grill's different, right? I don't even know. I don't know, but hey, there Check it is. Check it out though, good looking power supply, all black sleeved cables, no ketchup and mustard here. Are you goddamn kidding me? Wow, the test bench is broken. I can't even test it anymore. But hey guys, now that we have shown you everything that's going on the test bench, let's just test a couple of eSports titles, see how they perform, and then conclude this video. Looking for a silent PC case on a budget? Then look no further than the P10 Flux from Antec, featuring three pre-installed fans, a front panel door, and a reverse blade fan that is a staple of the Flux lineup for the power supply basement to keep your system nice and cool. Learn more by checking the link in the description down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this test bench all booted up and ready to go, let's dive into those benchmarks. Now we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Fortnite, Valorant, Rainbow Six Siege, 
and a mystery game, which we'll talk about later in the benchmark run. But first up with Fortnite, the game that a lot of you probably are interested in playing on a PC like this, we got, well, pretty decent results. The Intel HD graphics have come a long way. They used to be absolutely unusable for any sort of gaming, but in these 11 gen processors, and as we noted in some 10th gen processors, they actually are a lot better than you might think. For example, on performance mode at 1080p, we average anywhere between 50 to 60 FPS. It is not a great experience and is pretty stuttery in some situations, especially when you get into big battles, and sometimes it does dip down to 45 FPS. And at that point, it's not a great experience, but once you lower that resolution scale down to 80%, yes, it doesn't look super pretty, but you get a constant 60 FPS, a few drops here and there, but 60 FPS nonetheless, and sometimes into the 80s and 90s in less populated areas, is, making this a very playable Fortnite machine only using Intel integrated graphics. I really can't believe we've come this far, but it's still really, really impressive. Our friend Scattervolt made an in-depth video testing this up against the Ryzen APUs, and from his testing, he does show that the Ryzen APUs are better, but there are some future driver updates coming, and at the time of recording this benchmark section, that driver update just pushed, so maybe in a follow-up video we'll look more into the performance numbers after that driver update. But those new drivers might actually give these HD graphics a little bit more performance under the hood and maybe have them compete even more directly with Ryzen APUs. Next up, in Valorant on low settings, we start to see how this 11500 can stretch its legs by getting over 100 plus FPS. My theory with the performance of the CPU is that if a game is more CPU dependent, the 11500 is probably going to be better than something like a Ryzen 3 3200G, but the integrated graphics will hold it back. So in, for example, in a game like Valorant, getting over 100 plus FPS, Valorant is very CPU dependent and it is not super heavy on the graphics card, therefore you're going to get really awesome results compared to the Ryzen and APUs, but when you look at games like Rainbow Six Siege, which is next up on our list, which is definitely much more GPU heavy, on low settings we only average 45 FPS at 1080p, you start to see where maybe something like a Vega graphic Ryzen APU is going to have an advantage, getting more towards 60 FPS most of the time when playing games like Rainbow Six Siege, which are more graphically demanding. That doesn't mean that the 11500 with the UHD 750 graphics should not be a go-to option right now with everything going on because one they're readily available it's nearly impossible to get a 3200g right now let alone a 3400g and if you can actually pick these things up and play some light gaming on the side and lower your expectations a little bit maybe drop that resolution down to 720p and just enjoy some pc gaming you really can be held over pretty well with this sort of setup and that last mystery game that I mentioned is Bean Battles, which is just kind of a stupid meme game, but drives the point home that there's a lot of random small games out there that you can play with your friends that really don't require that much at all, or even a graphics card. Uh, the same game goes for things like Minecraft. Those games will run perfectly fine on UHD graphics, no problems whatsoever. And in Bean Battles, we got, uh, well, a really weird like 30 to 60 FPS. Um, I did have to lower the settings a little bit in that game because some of the graphical stuff is kind of weird, but it is very playable and kind of a dumb game that you can play with your friends so highly recommend you consider picking this game up but overall the summary of this video is UHD graphics have definitely come a long way and I highly highly recommend if you're just struggling to find a graphics card pick up something like the 11500 because that 11500 could easily handle a 3060 3070 6700 XT 6800 XT or even 3080 level card on a good b560 motherboard with some really fast RAM so it's really a good decision if you're somebody who's wanting just to have the basis of your system now, can play a little bit of games here and there, and then have a significant, like totally massive performance uptake just by getting a modern graphics card put in your system. So definitely consider doing this if you're waiting around to build your next gaming PC and use the link in the description down below. They are affiliate links and they do help us out if you do purchase these parts for your next gaming PC. So that about wraps up the benchmarking section of today's video. How about we bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. Okay guys, so Intel UHD 750 graphics, pretty good for the price. It doesn't really beat anything from Ryzen right now. It does go back and forth though. The main consensus is if you're playing a game that's very CPU dependent, this uh, combination using the UHD graphics will outperform most Ryzen APUs. But when it comes to things that are more graphically demanding, like higher end games, the APUs do perform better. So in summary, this is a good option to consider if you really want to go Intel and or just want something that can play some games now and maybe add a graphics card later, which seems like it could be a lot 
lot later with all the news we've been hearing. So uh, good temporary solution that you can actually buy? Yes, because it's really hard to get some Ryzen APUs right now. And also keep in mind, you are getting a lot more cores and a lot more threads with this i5, and they're also just overall stronger than something like the 3200G. So it might be a better option for you considering they're really not too far off in price considering the current market. So if you do ever plan on adding a graphics card, we do highly recommend going with this 11 Gen i5 just because of the upgrade path and the amount of power this i5 will have. So if you're interested in purchasing an 11500 motherboard or anything from today's video, link in the description down below. It will be an affiliate link and if you do purchase using the link, it will help us out. So thank you guys again for watching today's video. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and do not forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys the next one goodbye you know what's really cool like this new video set that you're probably really confused by because the intro was our old one and now this new one whatever social media twitter instagram join our discord link in the description down below get more from the toasty bros because i know you want more and hey if you guys were following our social media we posted this before these videos went live so social media is a way to get sneak peeks